Welcome to part four of the Alex Jones Deception playlist series. I've got my instant coffee here in the RV, and I've gotten a few thoughts collected. In this playlist series, and who knows how many videos I will produce, but I'm guessing in the end it's going to be at least several dozen. Uh, I'm going to try to separate my thoughts because they can kind of sometimes come across a little rambled and all over the place. It's, it's kind of my nature. It's the abstract way that I, that I speak and share my ideas. But I'm going to try to discipline myself to take it topic by topic with this Alex Jones uh, Deception series. Throughout the videos, you may hear me echo certain themes. So new viewers coming in on some of the other parts understand where I'm coming from. I'm coming from a place that for years I defended Alex Jones and his actions, his nature, how he behaved in public. Uh, not so much on video, but w with friends. I've also lost several friends along the way um, that have... Uh, certain people in the alternative media specifically wanted to make it some sort of a war with me. The fact that I had people on that were on the Alex Jones um, channel or show. People like Joel Skousen and others. So there was some paranoia on the, some of some people that maybe I and Alex Jones were sharing the guests. When in fact I was just doing my own thing. I really came under attack because I did not denounce Alex Jones. And I don't think it's really fair for people to force other people to denounce others. I also feel that a lot of the uh, Alex Jones conspiracy theories hold no weight or water. But I do think that there is an Alex Jones deception. I think he sold out to himself and the spirit of evil to a certain degree. Which, little by little, I will elaborate more on what that is, what I mean, how someone could put out a lot of good truth and information only to go along with the massive deception that can get people hurt, uh, attacked, and really undo the good work that you did. So for years, I talked about the good work that Alex Jones did. And the behavior that I'm seeing in recent years, not just recently, the Donald Trump endorsement was the last straw. True. I can hold my peace no more. But this started a long time ago. Now, I, I have held my peace for a long, long time. And I see the danger in doing that, in, in holding back what you think because of the consequences. I think I already had to pay the consequences for interviewing people like Jack Blood or being affiliated with Oracle Broadcasting or RBN at one point or American Freedom Radio. And I've already said a few things. I just never saw value in sharing all that was on my mind concerning Alex Jones being a sociopath. And in a way, grooming his audience for some major deception. And so this is the time for me to take it one subject. One subject at a time. Now, three minutes into this, uh, where we're going to start here is discussing how things shifted within the Alex Jones operation at its secret location in Austin, Texas, to where every guest, or at least probably most guests, or at least the people Alex Jones doesn't trust, along with his crew, which recent estimates were 70 to 80 at least, that's what he's reporting or saying, or bragging. Hey, it's Alex Jones' birthday! Everybody come on out and worship the king! Everybody, uh, anybody remember that video? And I thought at that moment about re-uploading that just to show, you know, little Napoleon has a birthday, everybody. Little Napoleon has a birthday. Everybody line up and say, see Jones. But I didn't say that at the time. Um... There, there's just so many thoughts that I have. But this is going to be about the uh, confidentiality agreements that he makes his uh, crew sign so people don't talk about the real Alex Jones. Follow the real Alex Jones on Twitter. Okay, well, how about the real, real Alex Jones? Let's talk about that. Oh, no, let's not talk about the real, real Alex Jones. There is a version of the real Alex Jones out there, ladies and gentlemen of the audience. And it hasn't really been presented yet to the public. 
We've seen the Jack Blood version, which was a watered-down version. And there are certain people that are angry with Alex Jones because he didn't really help them become a star, and they had some sort of falling out. But for a while, there was plenty of goings back and forth with Alex Jones with certain people that, for whatever reason, they had their falling outs. And I have seen, which is slightly off topic, but it's part of the topic, and not to be belittle anyone, most of the people that Alex Jones chooses to work with are of a certain nature. Okay, I'm going to be broad to start with, because I don't want to get too far off topic. Um, we can look at people like Mark Dice, we can look at people like Jack Blood, we can look at uh, other personalities, and we can see a little bit of consistency, and we can see those that are outside that box, outside that matrix, you can even uh, take a page from the David I Can book, outside that vibrational frequency. <laughs> Uh, but Alex Jones has put in measures because of people like Jack Blood making allegations that, well, at InfoWars back in the day, uh, Truth Rising, uh, I believe a documentary that was produced using a lot of footage from Luke Kronowski, and there's some behind-the-scenes drama with that, and the We Are Change, InfoWars falling out, that aside. Um, Jack Blood made the allegation that employees of Alex Jones at that time were forging his signature and duping listeners to perhaps paying a premium. I don't know. But under the impression they were buying something with the almighty, all-knowing photographic memory. Alex Jones' signature on the Truth Rising and or other InfoWars DVDs. That's a pretty big allegation to make. And so, it's not outside the realm of possibility that because of that reason and others that have worked for Alex Jones to go out and, and talk about their relationship with him. Uh, other people that have gone on to start their own alternative media networks uh, that talked about what their friendship was like with Alex Jones uh, before he really shifted towards the dark side. So, you know, he has a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of history that he has burning these bridges acting like he was you know, metamorphosizing into a, a, a new, darker Alex Jones, uh, willing to burn the people that helped him get to where he is today. So there's a lot of that history that you can learn about on your own. But former Alex Jones employees today, for the most part, do not talk in detail about what it was like to work for Alex Jones. This is the fear that Alex Jones instills in people. Here we have the king of conspiracy, the king of transparency. I'm for real. I'm for real. Then what are you afraid of, real Alex Jones? Are you afraid of the real, real Alex Jones? The whatever. I'm not going to just air every speculation that I have. I'll dance around the bush, so to speak, here and there. But I'm not going to go too far out into speculation. Uh, but I think a lot of us have wondered what the real Alex Jones is like. You know, there's, there's a certain aspect of what you're doing now with the symbolism. And also, the Masonic language that you use, brethren, in one video, where you seem to be talking to Mark, Mark Dice during that, uh, I almost called him Marky Mark, um, Mark Dice during that period when he was exposing you on YouTube and making allegations that you were putting poison in the tangy tangerine. And then it's believed that you bought him off by providing him attention. Say, well, you know, we need to get this video all over the world. It's on Drudge now. Here Mark Dice is with his petition, his latest viral video. In a way, you bought Mark Dice off and he took down those videos exposing some potentially nefarious things if any of that is actually true. Mark Dice took down those videos and then, lo and behold, Mark Dice is, is back on the Alex Jones Show multiple times. A lot of us learned a lot from that. We learned a lot from that and how you responded to that. And seeing how Mark Dice was clearly doing this for the wrong reasons. 
out of selfish reasons, oh, you didn't pay him fast enough. Oh, he said, fuck you, to my dad, my dad, <laughs> Okay, so where were you before Mark Dice? Talking about the mind-controlled morons. And so you now join the mind-controlled moron operation with your association with InfoWars. How openly scandalous can you get? Oh, oh, it will. It will move to the next level. We are... Ladies and gentlemen, in Idiocracy, forget the sequel, we're in part three. This is 3.0. We're, we're going to the new level. In a world where Jones endorses Trump, you're in a Idiocracy. Where people don't see this sleight of hand bait and switch. So there are people alive today that know things about Alex Jones that were actually there, man. That may not have been as self-serving as Jack Blood or others. That took note of other things that may have been considered a little bit unusual to see from the great Alex Jones, who supposedly is exposing Satanism, behave as he has behind the scenes at Infowars.com, behind closed doors, where there are all, all kinds of secrets. You know, I, I can just hear the screams now. And I just, you know, almost in my mind's eye, just somebody walking in, go, oh my God, I didn't see anything. I did not see anything. That's right. You didn't see anything. I mean, Alex Jones putting the fear of death into people. You didn't see a damn thing. Now, I know this is, this is getting, this is getting out there. But, but of course, if you're Alex Jones, there's a lot of things that you would want to make sure doesn't leave the studio. How about the blacklist? Here, here are my political enemies. Okay, fear Alex. No matter how important the story is, these people at one point talk shit about me even if they come out with a breaking story. Don't ever get that out there. Don't ever recognize them. Now, for years, that has been going on. And to be fair to Alex Jones, nobody is responsible for carrying anybody else. And so, Alex Jones has the right to say, you know, I'm not going to promote anybody. I'm just going to just do my own thing. However, a lot of him doing his own thing has been establishing his place at the top of the alternative media. He hasn't just done his own thing. He's actually spent a lot of his personal time throughout the years making sure he remains on top. Making sure that he is the go-to guy for the mainstream media. Making sure that he plays a significant role in the mainstream media as what? As what? A consultant. The person that they go and because, oh, you're the leader of the conspiracy theorists, Alex Jones. Well, we've got some topics. Who do you think we should have on? And what topics do you think we should bring up? Now, anybody that's worked with Alex Jones for a long, long time would have firsthand information on who he would consider to be his biggest enemies or those that he dislikes the most. They would have information of all of those on the blacklist. And he's also admitted on a show, folks, in a veiled threat to Mark Dice about the blacklist, which one commentator interpreted to be some sort of Masonic threat. Uh, he was implying that both Mark Dice and Alex Jones are Masons, uh, and that Alex Jones was using open Masonic language to Mark Dice, saying, hey, if you want to be involved in a polite society, i.e. be on my show or be on other shows, Defaming me will get you nowhere. And Alex Jones has said this many times in the past. And it is true that, that the smallest criticism of Alex Jones or association with others, and he said this too, anybody associated with so-and-so is my enemy. Gotta understand, uh, over the years since 9-11, more young men have joined the world of alternative media. Uh, especially in, uh, I call it the golden age of alternative media. 2004, 5, 6, 7 in documentary films. It was literally it was literally coming up like an uppercut, exploding like a solar flare. 
Um, I, 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 and I felt it, and I'm actually feeling that energy again, which is why I'm getting more active in media and this channel. I'm feeling like like a new renaissance of alternative media, like a spirit, a spirit of liberty rising, if you will. And Alex Jones says a lot of things, interesting slogans, by the way, they have a lot of truth to them. This video series is, is going to highlight that, and I'll highlight some of those truths that are important and those good things that he has put out there, but it's all leading to this deception and with recent events, what we're seeing with the Trump, Alex Jones Association, all Muslims are the threat, demonization, things that literally can, re can lead to people being attacked. We're seeing a rise in stories of mosques being set on fire and women going in and out of mosques being attacked. I've called it on this YouTube channel, seeing that there's, there's this propaganda to attack women. That even this whole you know punch out game or knockout game uh, is, is coming from a spirit of evil to run up on someone and hit a woman and knock them out. That's 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 cold hearted. That's non human. But where Alex Jones is coming from with this marginalization and people acting on that, and and actual Muslims being targeted and people that others think could be a Muslim, which is where why this is racial turning racial. Because how do you really know someone is a Muslim? I've seen Europeans with beards, and they look Islamic, like the whole Osama bin Laden type thing, and they aren't Muslims. They just happen to be a, a white dude with a beard. On the topic of white dudes, how many of those pictures with those uh, ISIS terrorists, you know, standing uh, above an American, in some cases, looked very white? and very Caucasian. And how many years has the Pentagon uh, been involved in Hollywood-type productions where they, hi they hire actors, and I've met a few, that are duped into going to Hollywood, that think that they're going to go be stuntmen, and that they're going to go be in an action film. And instead of actually going and being a part of a film that's going to be seen in a regular movie theater, they actually take young guys in this country all the time down to Hollywood. Uh, they dress them up like Alibaba, and uh, they tell them to uh, grab the gun and go, yeah, da, 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 da. And, and, and they film it on a green screen. It's not just the CIA doing this. I met a guy when I worked at Roos Chris Steakhouse. When I lived in Portland, he did valet. And so he wasn't aware of what he was going to Hollywood for. He was excited and bragging about going to Hollywood to star in a movie. He leaves Portland, goes down there, gets involved in that, and comes back. Tells me not to tell anyone, but he'd seen my show. And it was during the Bush years where more people were somewhat aware of this, and I would say a little less a little less apathetic. You know, it's easy for people to, you know, hear the truth about torture and the victims of war when Bush was the president. Things changed after Obama, unfortunately. <laughs> I couldn't believe what this guy was telling me. And now I wonder. How much of that footage did whoever film that stuff where they dressed up the white guys with the turban and did they do any beheadings, by the way? Uh, how much of that footage did they just sit on till, till the right moment? How much other footage are they sitting on that they haven't even released, that they're waiting to release, that they could embed and put into a new story? Oh, here's another Islamic couple that came to the United States and they're so grateful they came here. They decided to join ISIS and uh, start shooting people in California. And right on cue, the woman's being demonized. But mark my words, this is a global war on women. When the New World Order controls media in the United States and convinces Americans and an aspect of white America to think that it's okay to go around killing people in other countries, you're then threatening the lives of those women. Whatever happens to those women, what will happen to those women, what will happen to people in America if we're ever occupied by China and Russia? Do you really think the world is going to show the American people compassion? And so this whole Alex Jones deception, Donald Trump deception, and more is building, is, is brewing, is bubbling. And if people were able to speak about what Alex Jones was like, what was happening behind the scenes, for example, with his alleged divorce, I don't have the, the first-hand information about it. 
Uh, I believe that there are reports st saying that the divorce process started several years ago. There are rumors of Alex sleeping with his reporter, Leanne Mac Black McAdoo, oftentimes called Leanne Macaboob. As beautiful as she is, girl next door type of look, she has played that Alex Jones can use sex to sell too. She has, she, she has played her role well. She speaks well. She is attractive. She's still reading Alex's script, so to speak. As are the other reporters. I want to see more women and minorities involved in truth reporting. Alex Jones understands that there's a market to have a few people uh, on, his, uh, on his crew host the InfoWars Nightly News, and I think that he's done a decent job on A-level. And that's all I'm going to say about that, out of respect to those reporters. Okay, because I don't want to be really disrespectful. So I see how he caters to the market, and I'm not saying that there's something wrong with that. What seems to be clear, though, is that Alex Jones himself does harbor racist ideals when you're able to bed down with someone who clearly has an agenda to marginalize a group of people. Muslims. Muslims in America. Muslims around the world. This whole, all Muslims are a threat thing, that's why people comment, well, that's why we're over there killing those people, and that's why we should keep doing it, because of the threat. We need to go on the offensive. These are the statements I see people making in the Facebook comment section. All I have to do to put my fingers on the pulse of America is look at these mainstream comment sections, not my own friends list and what people are saying, because I've blocked and defriended people that are calling for sniping refugees. I've seen all that in recent weeks. That's traumatizing. I mean, just on one level, to know other people think that way, but to know that one day you could also be confused for being an immigrant, for being a non-fully pale-skinned Aryan. Now, this is where I'm going with this. In this playlist series, it's included. You know, the veiled racial supremacy that's come out of Alex Jones in, in various ways throughout the years is now just overt. Let me tell you, when Henry from Red Eyes Creations and Paul from Propaganda Matrix and Alex Jones from Infowars.com and Jeff Rents from Rents.com and others talk about white genocide in Europe, let me explain to you what they really mean. When you hear these articles about, you know, whites no longer being dominant and, and this brownness spreading throughout the earth. Whites, whites being massacred. The, the, they're, they're, they're being taken out by the brown gene. It's so evil and dark. It's so barbaric. It's so divisive. It's so medieval. It is so arconic. It is so obvious. These people are under a spell. For years, I have been a part of this alternative media since 2004, since 2005. And for years, I have been the only that I have been able to find person of Afghani blood on my father's side. The other side's Germanic, Austrian, white, as you would call it. Fifth generation Oregonian. Many, many generations of Oregonians on my mother's side. You know, uh, I'm going to write a, a, a story about my uh, life. This is not the time for that. What I will say is that uh, I got involved in <coughs> alternative media related stuff in 2003, 4, and 5. Okay? So that's, that's about a decade ago. Since that time, you know, as you might imagine, you don't go out being a 9-11 truther, talking about stuff, even promoting Alex Jones and anything dealing with that like I did 10 years ago, and they get accepted and be taken seriously by much of society. And for lots of different reasons, I and my family split years ago. My parents divorced when I was born. That's all you need to know right now. 
And all you need to know right now is that there was a sense of not being good enough by being mixed throughout my whole life before 9-11 even happened because of things that were said. Um, I think a lot of cultural racism on my mother's family side. And on my dad's side, I was never a Muslim. I was never one of them. So they discarded me for being non-Muslim. I will say that now, that I have never had support from the other side of the family. Without whining to any of you, what I want to say is I am mixed of both those lines. And because I embarked on the truth, uh, the path of alternative media, YouTube, and Access TV, talking about the New World Order and more, it excluded me from much of society. And both sides. As a teenager, long before 9-11, I was looking at things like meditation and Buddhism and Eastern thought. <clears throat> so I remember in the only two years that I did have to live with my father and his family, right? I will always remember how they treated me. Long story short. As far as my own clashes with my father over grades, another story. But my story is a story of a surviving my own parents' bullshit. Check. Entering my own dark ages of cultural confusion and self-abuse during 99 to 2000 to 2001 during 9-11. Check. Having a spiritual experience, learning about 9-11, uh, finding the alternative media, starting my own Access TV show, interviewing guests, and playing a huge role in helping people see beyond these racist, religious boxes. The name of my show was called Outside the Box, and I was expressing who I was spiritually, and, and that's who I was. And people like Alex Jones were there to say, hey, wake up, the world is not as it seems. And then you have Waking Life too turning red in the face, and I identified with that emotion. Hey, I was born into a world where they're saying my dad's uh, land, his country, is a country that harbors terrorists, and that narrative is not true, because even though those Afghanis rejected me for not speaking Persian, and not being a Muslim, and rebelling against my father, that's another story you don't know about, my dad say, hey, y'all know my dad's son is bad, he is denounced, fuck him. So I've been on my own for years. <clears throat> but I saw how Afghanistan was demonized, and I saw Alex Jones being one of the few to kind of highlight this region was being used as a proxy war region. More story to 9-11, more to the story of 9-11, and, and you look at these victims of war and people in that region being tortured. I've been through a lot, folks, in my years that I think that nobody knows anything about. And so... Um, I've gone through this whole period of, of doing YouTube without family and having to block both my parents that have been kind of psycho in their own way. So I've been on my own for a long time. And to... It hurts so much to know that a big part in my isolation has been me being on this path of truth and alternative media, first and foremost. And I don't want to go through all the ways that society can persecute those of us that are on the path. Much more so those of us that start our own websites. It's not about money, but when you put yourself out there, there are consequences. And some people can end up being targeted. Not any, all of us are like the level of Alex Jones, but we put ourselves out there and we say the same things. We don't have the same level of protection. And some people have ended up homeless without family, without, and so in my own story, I've lived the, the, the American refugee experience, terrified that at some point I'm going to be confused for a Syrian immigrant because I'm half Persian. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my fucking mouth? Any of you. My last name is Islamic. Can you hear me now? Oh my God. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? 
I have spent the last 10 years of my life, 11 years, exposing the New World Order. And I've seen how society has treated me for that. And because I'm not an Alex Jones, I'm not the top, there's no financial backing. There's no, there's no net to fall into. You fall through the cracks of fucking society. We live in a world where they say fear conspiracy theorists. People have told me we're afraid of our doors being kicked in by them if we harbor you. That's the amount of fear put out there. Alex Jones plays a role in that. You could end up on the list. You could end up with your door kicked in and taken to a camp. And so for years, some people have been concerned that an association with me would bring them harm. Again, for years, I, wanted, I was on Access TV and some members of society that are susceptible to fear. They assume that all those shows are being watched. <clears throat> and that if you're not taken out, that you're a part of the conspiracy. Many people have wondered whether I myself was a federal agent. Assuming that because I was allowed to say what I was saying at the time, again, mirroring a lot of the information news that Alex Jones was reporting in this last decade. Mirroring a lot of it on my show. A great deal of it. A great deal of myself I put out there for the cause in alternative media. And I'm concerned now because my last name's Islamic. And if you look at all, I don't, I mean, I almost feel like even telling people this could result in something bad. But it's like, I can't not talk about this because I now, because of what Alex is doing and others are doing, am concerned that I'm going to end up in a camp one day because of my name. Not because of where I'm born, but because of a combination of me awakening people to certain things and being marked. To top it off, my father left me with the middle name Saeed. Saeed. Of all fucking names. Saeed. This is just fucking great. This is just fucking great. And so, like, I'm in this, okay, you're in waking life. I'm in a waking nightmare. Where I feel now I know partially why you never liked me. We'll talk about when I met Alex Jones another time. But but being that I've talked about being born mixed in a culture that will, in a world where both sides of a culture could treat you like you're nothing because you're not fully one of them. So the answer is, in my opinion, threw me away. And the Nagels, if you want to know the Austrian last name line, Nagel. Spelled N-A-G-L. Or N-A-G-E-L to cite my direct grandfather, N-W Nagel, of Nagel Floor Covering, still in business today, in Aurora, Oregon, USA. He passed in 2004, one day after my first Access TV show. Grandfather, my mother's side, said to me, Alex, I don't want to leave this planet till you are on the right path in life. And let me tell you now. Let me tell you. My grandfather was a World War II vet. My grandfather was a member of NRA. My grandfather was a fisherman. My grandfather was a pilot. My grandfather had a carpentry store. My grandfather was a man's man, American, John Wayne, dude. And yet his grandson, because of circumstances and whatnot, is living, is living a life that I don't know that... He, he told me after 9-11, tell him you're Italian. He did see it coming. Oh, he, he, he told me after 9-11. Tell him you're Italian. You know. You know, and this, this last decade of my life is marked by this. I've tried to tell people that people have treated me different in Portland when I was there. And that I always felt that I was handicapped on some level. See, nobody wants to hear somebody cry racism or victim. Because you have that shit happening all the time. You have people crying racism when there ain't no racism. And then you got situations where there is, but it's not popular to even talk about it. 
And I've sat by and watched people act like they care about people, not even talk about the victims of war in Afghanistan. I've sat there and watched several answerees become translators for United Mission Essential, including including the Darth Vader archetype whose sperm brought me into this world. My father, my own father, cried when Russia invaded Afghanistan. I remember that in 19, was that, those were the 80s. And his father was there. His father stayed there. My father worked for the government. The government, you know, this is before ISIS, this is before the Taliban. And so they were not of the peasant class, I guess if you were to see things in terms of classes also over there. Gotta understand, I want to be brief on this, because this was supposed to be about Alex Jones. But you see, people don't understand Muslim immigrants, Middle Eastern immigrants, and what the Alex Jones rhetoric is doing to potentially threaten the lives of people like me that are fighting alongside or at the front lines of the info war with videos putting out info about the New World Order the last decade, making marks of ourselves as it fucking was. I've walked right up into a FEMA facility in Denton, Texas, to ask them about NDAA. You think Alex Jones ever posted that? That shit takes balls and risk. And so the reason I'm uh, telling you of some of these things here is because people like me are the people that are being called the result of the, the white genocide. You know, when you have a mix of a Middle Eastern line and a white chick, you have this white genocide. So that's what I am. I'm death. I'm a genocide. And this confirms, the shit that they're putting out there confirms, I was right all these years when I said people looked at me different. And maybe my last name held me back because I'm an Ansar on my father's line. Oh, forget my mother's side and that half-white Germanic-Austrian side. That's just the fucking same as you. Let's just forget that. Oh, I'm maybe one of them. And then people have told me, Alex, nobody thinks that way. You're crazy. And now, for probably the rest of my life, I'm going to get to read in the alternative media because I'm in the alternative media. And I'm putting out info about the New World Order. And I actually post news every day, which requires me to spend some time on the internet reading the headlines from all these websites, pulling good headlines as I aggregate news. And it's traumatizing. I just can't look away from that. I earn a few bucks posting news on the side as a side gig <clears throat> for a website. And I am seeing levels of hatred towards non-Aryans. People, they're, they're, but they're all just being called Muslims like Muslim is a race, but it's not. It's like complete demonization of all... And they say, well, you know what? We've done so much to hurt them. Admitting that there's fucking horrible things that have been done to those people. And that's why we can't trust them. That's why we can't trust them. Because we've hurt them and bombed them. And raped them. And done shit to places where some of these people are from. So we have to be afraid of them. I mean, you're now looking at a heartless society. We are in a heartless society. When does Alex Jones ever really try to do anything for the victims of war instead of use it to just build up his false anger at the system? To turn around and support those that would have no problem putting Muslims in camps. Oh, oh, he was mad at Michelle Malkin. Oh yeah, he was mad at Michelle Malkin. Also pushed her bodyguard, made sure Aaron Dykes edited that part out. Aaron Dykes, just like Melissa Melton, just like many others, many, many people with souls, I would say. 
but obviously have not really gone out to expose what it was really like working for Alex Jones, either because they're paid off or because he literally has put the fear of death or lawsuit into them. Perhaps there was a severance package prepared here. Here's a stack of gold, okay? I got all the money in the world, bitches. All I'm asking you is don't work against me. And then maybe play a little mind control. You know the New World Order's out to get me. You know. And may maybe put his hand on their lap. And you can see Melissa or somebody just sl slapping it. Unlike Leanne Macaboo. Listen. You know they're out to get me. You know they're out to hurt me. Don't you do it too. <laughs> so I could see him, him doing all that. But ultimately, he and others have demonized people from Islamic countries in, in a very sick, profound way. And I have to share from the heart how, how bothered I've been since 9-11, even living in this country, uh, being of mixed race and feeling that one day they could come after me because of my last name. If there's some sort of uh, Islamic hysteria. Because of the weight that Ansar holds in the Islamic world for anyone that's able to bring up a Wikipedia page or entry. Okay, I, I've said enough. Does anybody know how to do any research? That is what scares me. Is a mass roundup of people based on their fucking names. Because of the shit that's being pulled by Trump right now. Making Alex Jones an accessory to this demonization. I have seen Americans talk the most outrageous shit about murdering innocent people. People that are crying about their own rights being violated. And for years I've tried to warn America, like Alex Jones, that America is being used to destroy America. That's why you have the suicide rates. That's why you have the GMO in this country. Meanwhile, they build up the New World Order in China and Russia. I'm on record since 2008 warning Americans of an impending Chinese invasion, pinpointing 2025 as a period where I think the most shit's going down, pinpointing the post-2020s where North Korea and China are ready for full-on war with the United States, EMPs, solar flares, by the way, in the solar cycle influencing wars, that's a big part of my research, we're in the cycle now at the tail end, and everything's just going to ramp up for the next 10 years like a punch. And Alex Jones is getting his followers ready for the deception. I mean, that's big when you go balls out, when you lift your balls and you show how evil and dirty you are. Demonizing all Muslims... And then creating this massive hysteria that all the immigrants are Muslims, which is truly racism, saying that people from all these countries are radical Muslims when that's not the case. And then making sure your own reporter base is, is all black, Hispanic, or white. Never actually bridging the world with Middle Eastern people. Sending your god-awful PSYOPs reporter Joe Biggs to a mosque to piss people off and freak people out on the internet <laughs> as you claim that there's an ISIS base in Mexico. I know people that do threat analysis for contract companies. I met a guy off the grid named Hiram. Did some videos about how, you know, the La Raza racist local government is kicking the whites off their land. I've been covering that story, Alex Jones, and you made sure you stayed away from the fact that whites have been pushed off their land by a La Raza-influenced local government in Costilla County. You dropped the ball... There are people that emailed you the story about what's going on. You wouldn't touch that story just because I broke it. I broke a story about a racist local government illegally pushing whites off their land. I did that. And I am doing that. I have relocated to northern New Mexico, but I did a lot to expose that racism towards white America. And yet I am seeing white America aspects of it act more alarmed about this whole fake Islamic invasion than coming to the rescue of a 65-year-old veteran.
My friend Daryl Carter was pushed off his land. He paid over $30,000 for his land. They're pushing all of these newcomer Caucasians off their land, citing land use codes that haven't even been officially changed yet, saying if you don't have a septic, you can't live off the grid. They're freaked out now that all these gringos are moving to this part of, well, now I'm in northern New Mexico, but the southern part of Colorado, because that's where I've been trying to tell people, you know, this whole scenario with China and Russia, you know, the West Coast and East Coast are not going to be safe places to be. Is Alex Jones warning his audience about the real Red Dawn? No. Bait and switch. Sleight of hand. The Muslims are your enemy. Brown people are your enemy. Black people, by and large, are ra racist. All of Black Lives Matter is in this box. Now, I've seen plenty of degenerate behavior coming from Black Lives Matter. I've also seen... Uh, in a recent video, a racist, steroid, military cop looking people come up and call this person the N-word over and over and over and try to get this black person to fight. And this guy's screaming, I'm a Marine. And he's and people are supporting what this guy's doing because of what other Black Lives Matter protesters have done. I put out a video showing Black Lives Matter protesters robbing this guy in Portland. I've exposed the the criminal actions of black lives matter in portland nobody can pull an argument on me that i'm for them but as alex jones marginalized the whole movement and many black people in a certain way the answer is yes have many black people also marginalized other black people a certain way oh fuck yes that's a special kind of sickness. It's healthy, though, when there are black people that can see the issues with black people murdering black people, like uh, Tommy Sotomayor and, and others, who calls um, the black women that murder their children black beasties, calling them basically a beast for being animalistic and brutalizing their male child. He calls out that dark feminine, that dark feminine Rising, by the way, exists very much in white culture, though. See, I don't see one race as being behind all this. To be honest with you, we could just call it demonic or reptilian. It's evil. But when I see people demonize whole groups, what I have not seen <coughs> is, is Alex Jones really show any compassion for those victims of war in Afghanistan or Iraq. People use those talking points against their political enemies and say, look how many people you killed, yet they still serve. And now, I will call it for what it is, that Nazi ideology. That Nazi ideology. That's why it's so Orwellian that Alex Jones has spent many years calling the Bush family and others Nazis. When he himself is supporting some racial agenda to divide the world, taking literally a page from the Albert Pike handbook. Has Alex Jones ever actually discussed Afghan history? This is, this is a book written by my dad's cousin. Now, he's not aware of the New World Order. He doesn't get into 9-11 truth. He gets into Afghan history. And anyone that looks at Afghan history does not see a long le le legacy of Taliban or ISIS rule. You actually see a very colorful and interesting history of lots of groups trying to come in to take over Afghanistan. From Alexander the Great to the British Empire, which resulted in Afghanistan being formed as a country several hundred years ago, tribes coming together to take on the enemy, turned nationalist and in that micro history i think that there's a lot of history of uh middle eastern people and different tribes doing bad shit to other people to take over territories just like what was done here and we have the history of the native americans being removed from this land from this land america has its own dirty history the united states that is the corporation America being a continent, but some people confusing country and continent. We're American. Speak American. You mean speak like you're from this continent? What does that mean? I mean, the jackass behavior, it's like, you know what? Have we or have we not evolved in this country beyond the 50s? 
Have we or have we not evolved beyond where we were during Nazi Germany in World War II? Are Americans much different than the Nazis if an aspect of them are willing to believe that ISIS represents Muslims and that all Muslims are terrorists and that there's only one way to deal with terrorists? You go after their families. You go after their families. We don't need to be politically correct. We don't need to respect the America that our grandfathers died for in World War II. If my grandfather was alive, he would be, uh, hopefully, a Ron Paul Republican. But he was a Republican. In his last days, he did say that uh, the Bush speech was beautiful. You know, when, when, when he said, you know, Saddam and your sons, you got 24 to 48 hours to get out of Iraq. My, my grandfather's like, that's, a, that's beautiful. <laughs> now at that point, again, Alex Jones and the videotapes and that period of outreach giving his tape to everyone that I considered a close friend or family. You need to wake up to the truth about 9-11. And I saw people reject me. And I've seen people ask me where I'm from in this lifetime. And when you try to explain where you're from, the, the look of confusion, the look of fear, and then wondering throughout your whole life if some people rejected you for whatever reason, be it romantically or professionally, because of a fear of association, being that I have been told by people that they were concerned about a association with me because of my name or because of my show. But what about when you combine the name and the show when you could already be targeted based on the things that you're saying, last name aside, and then you have Alex Jones' turncoat with Trump who says that we should go after their families. Fuck being politically correct. We're going to have a war with Islam. How do you determine who is a Muslim and who is not? As far as I'm concerned, you go by fucking last names. I want the world to know that I existed. Just in case I ever disappear. I'm Alex Ansari. This has been part four of my Alex Jones Deception playlist. Stay tuned. Part five is coming at you. AlexAnsari.tv is the website.